thank you all for coming this afternoon. We do appreciate the fact that you're giving up part of your afternoon for us, and uh, that always makes us feel pretty good. And uh, we're we're really we we consider that a, an honor and a privilege that you're willing to share some of your time with us this afternoon. Uh, this is our second webinar of the year. It's kind of hard to believe that we're already into February, uh, just over 10 months until Christmas. For those of you who want to start shopping early, uh, there's a scary thought. But anyway, I guess we should go on and, and get started with the webinar instead of worrying about the fact that we'll probably see Christmas trees go up by Easter. So uh, we're here this afternoon to learn about eBot and how the eBot can be used in the classroom, classroom, how it can eliminate, ugh, I can't speak, how it can eliminate frustrations for students and teachers and having materials prepared ahead of time, uh, how it can be used for distance learning, uh, and we're going to learn about its compact size. Uh, some of the things that we'll be covering this afternoon, you'll learn about the different models of eBot that are available. Uh, we're going to talk about how the optical character recognition or OCR part of the eBot can contribute to, or, to a multi-sensory multi -sensory approach. <clears throat> we will also talk about the different optical character recognition capabilities on the different models of eBots. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, ideas for group and project collaborations. We'll talk about how eBot can be used for testing. Um, we'll talk about its compactness and, uh, and, and, and small size, its basic capabilities, uh, and the advantages and unique features of each of the uh, eBot models that are out there. We'll also talk about uh, ways to facilitate research in libraries that aren't necessarily uh, equipped for the blind or visually impaired and how uh, eBot can certainly make that easier. So first of all, let's get to know eBot a little bit. A number of you may have seen eBot at some of the past shows or demonstrations by HIMSS. eBot was announced, I think we pre-showed it at ATIA last year, and then we really showed it at CSUN. So it's coming up on sort of its first year of, uh, of existence. Uh, there are three different models of eBot. There's the eBot, the eBot Advanced, and the eBot Pro. The eBot and the eBot Advanced look the same. The primary difference in between the, the basic eBot model and the eBot Advanced is that the Advanced model has optical character recognition. The optical character recognition on the eBot Advanced is whatever is under the camera, so it's sort of what you see is what you get. Um, so it is not going to capture the entire page, it is going to capture whatever is visible under the camera. That is different from the eBot Pro, which has a separate dedicated camera for optical character recognition, and it will capture the entire page. One of the beauties of that being that with video magnifiers with optical character recognition, the trick on a lot of these models is to reduce the size of the text before you take the picture, uh, but then of course you really can't see what you're taking the picture of. Uh, with the eBot Pro, that becomes unnecessary because you're using a second camera, so you can still have the text at whatever size you want uh, and comfortably look at it as you're getting it focused under the camera before you take a picture of it uh, and then you get the entire page, whether it's visible for the camera or not. The eBot is, real, is unique in that it can be hooked up to virtually any screen on virtually any device anywhere. Uh, the first thing that we always mention at this point is the fact that you can connect it to your iPad. Uh, we, we, of course, mention that first because that's sort of a buzzword. Everybody's excited about iPads. You know, it's, 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 it's the hip in thing. So it's what we're, I guess, most proud of. But you can also connect this to other tablets, such as your Android tablet, uh, like your Galaxy or your Nexus. You could hook this to something like a Surface. 
you can hook this wirelessly to your PC or you can hook it via USB cable to your PC and you can do the same to the Mac so that you can hook up wirelessly to a Mac or again you can use uh, a USB cable. You do not have to have a Wi-Fi network for this to work. eBot has a built-in Wi-Fi network so it is broadcasting its own Wi-Fi hotspot and then you simply hook the device up to that Wi-Fi network. You download an app, which of course is free, from either the iTunes Store or the Google Play Store uh, or from our website for the PC or for the Mac uh, that will let your device see eBot and let your device take control of eBot. Uh, eBot can magnify uh, objects that are directly under the camera. It can also be used for distance viewing. This is another significant difference between the eBot and the eBot Advanced and the eBot Pro in that the eBot Pro has motorized cameras so that you can actually turn from looking at something that's say on your desk to something on a smart board or a whiteboard uh, by gestures on your iPad or your iPhone uh, or Android device or by a couple of key clicks on the computer, you don't have to manually touch the camera. So there's never going to be any shaking, anything like that. Whereas on the eBot and the eBot Advanced, you're physically moving the camera from near view, looking at something on your desk, to distance view, where you're looking at something further off. A teacher in the front of the room, a smart board, a map, you name it. And, and, and just, just for those of you who keep track of these things, the speech that we're using for the optical character recognition is a cappella. Um, but we hear all the time that, you know, to, to, to get things made accessible takes forever, uh, it can be bureaucratic, it can take a long time, and that's where eBot really, sh really shines. You don't necessarily uh, have to take planning time to enlarge a worksheet, to enlarge a test or a quiz, and you know, gr group projects. You, you may or may not have the materials that you need uh, for your low vision student. And eBot solves all of these problems. And in addition to letting the student sit wherever he or she wants in the classroom and see what's going on at a distance. And the battery life, by the way, is about four hours. And that's if you're using Wi-Fi. So you're going to get a bit, a, a bit of a longer battery life if you're using USB connected to a computer because then you can turn the Wi-Fi off. But so in addition to be, the, the student being able to sit virtually anywhere in uh, the classroom, you're allowing the student now to have access to information at the same time that their sighted compatriots are getting it. So the student can look at the whiteboard, they, uh, they can see the worksheet that you remembered that you were going to use five minutes before class started. Uh, you don't have to worry about having a pop quiz that you suddenly want to give to see if they're actually reading their homework. Uh, you can put it under the eBot. Uh, and it's, and it's, going to take, it's going to get rid of these concerns. And you're going to, to be able to use the speech if you choose so that the student, if they want to use multiple modalities, can use speech and looking at the text uh, so that you're, you're looking at it and hearing it. Or more likely, you're probably going to have the student primarily look at it. Uh, and you're going to be using the OCR just as a, as, as a fallback like for, for eye fatigue. Part of the beauty of eBot, in addition to being able to hook up to virtually any screen, is that it can be taken virtually anywhere. It's small, it only weighs a little over four pounds. The eBot Pro only weighs a little over five pounds. Uh, they fold up flat. They come with a nice, convenient carrying case. You can, when I travel with my eBot, I put my computer in the same carrying case as my as my eBot, it's also the same carrying case that has my iPad because I'm a big believer in overkill and I want to be able to show eBot and all of its various permutations and connectivity options. But eBot collapses really easy. It's just a matter of hitting a couple of button, hitting a button and moving the cameras. On the eBot Pro, you don't even have to move anything. You just hit a button and it collapses on its own or it sets itself up on its own. Uh, when it when it is set up, you don't need an XY table. 
This is particularly nice on the Pro because you can move the camera back and forth again using motorized the, the, the motorized camera so you can use gestures on either the joystick remote that comes with it or on your Mac PC or your tablet and you can have the text scanned by the, the, the camera the camera can move from left to right across the page and you never have to touch the camera in order to be able to, to, to completely see the text. You can take an eBot from, the la from classroom to classroom, you can take eBot to a library, you can set it up virtually anywhere. It's going to always give you access to printed materials. You are going to be able to save screenshots from the eBot if you're looking at distance materials uh, just by saving a screenshot onto your iPad or your Mac, your PC, your Android device. Uh, and on the eBot Pro, we actually have an SD card slot so that you can save directly to the eBot uh, and save JPEGs. eBot, because of its versatility, is going to allow teachers to change lesson plans up on, on, on the fly. Uh, you don't all, you know, especially if you're trying to do something, say, with current events, and uh, you, you want to be able to take last night's news into, the consideration, in, in, into today's topic. You may have something you want your students to read. Uh, you can do that without worrying about excluding uh, your, your low vision student. You just hand the, the student the text, they're going to be able to put it under the eBot and they're going to be able to read it. Uh, you know, you can do that with, uh, with newspapers. Uh, we, uh, I still like my newspaper. Uh, um, you know, and, and, and everything's just going to be right there. You can also instantly switch gears on, on, you know, based on classroom discussion so that the, the student can follow the discussion and be able to see who's talking by using the distance camera capabilities of the eBot. You're going to be able to jump ahead uh, through materials. The student's still going to be able to keep up using eBot. So what you're essentially offering is complete accessibility to virtually any printed material to your low vision student. And we've talked about this quite a bit uh, in, in previous slides, but one of the things that really is exciting about the eBot Advanced and the eBot Pro is the optical character recognition capabilities. Uh, you can use the, the magnification uh, so that the student can see what's happening, and you can use the optical character recognition so that you can actually hear what's happening. So you get a multiple, I, I, uh, I always run it, and I travel a lot throughout the country, and I run into to, to students who have varying, you know, various learning styles who are used to using different modalities of learning, and some folks really want to be able to see it. Some people do better if they can see it and hear it at the same time. Uh, it just enforces the, the, the material that much stronger if they're able to have two different sources deliver it to them at one time. And we allow you to do that. Uh, also keep in mind that with eBot, you're allowing the students to take their own notes because you can freeze the images. If you're looking at a whiteboard and you see something where the teacher says that's going to be on the test, you snap a picture of it, you go back, you look at it later, and you're able to actually and, and, and you're able to take notes and keep up at the same time. We have a, a number of studies that you can look at here on the Google Scholar site uh, where we talk about the advantages of multiple modalities. Uh, of learning, I won't. Uh, I won't drag you through those at the moment. You can look at those on your own time. One of the things that I remember from being in school, and in, in particular in being in college, uh, was the difficulty in collaborating with friends and, and, and fellow peers on projects. The teacher or professor was always saying something like, you know, okay, gather in groups and let's do X. And X would always involve printed materials somewhere. And as a blind person, I'd be sitting there going, that's wonderful. I guess I'm not going to be really cooperating with today's classroom bit. I'll just have to catch up to it later on. Uh, and f with eBot, that's not really an issue for your low vision students. It allows for collaboration in groups on projects. eBot, again, because of its portability, can be taken virtually anywhere. And so it's going to allow for your low vision student to actively be a part of any classroom discussion so that if you spontaneously want to break your students up into groups uh, to go over materials that they were reading last night or 
maybe that they were supposed to read last night and didn't read last night, uh, you're able to do that with eBot. Testing is always a big thing. eBot can be used for testing. Uh, the, uh, the implications here are obvious. I mean, standardized testing is not going to be a problem with eBot. Uh, you could fill out a Scantron under eBot. Uh, eBot is a flexible enough solution that it can be taken virtually anywhere. It's not going to take up a very big footprint. Uh, it can be silent. Even if someone is using the OCR, you could use headphones. Uh, so it fits easily within uh, the Common Core and testing requirements that we're looking at. Uh, and again, you can use magnification, OCR, or both. And we do have a headphone slot so that if you're using both, the rest of the world doesn't have to hear what you're listening to. So you don't necessarily need a special place to take your test. That always used to bother me as a student. It would be like, okay, class, get ready for your test, and Dave will see you down the hall. That was never any fun. Uh, so now you're able to take your test in the same environment that everyone else is. Before we get to questions and comments, I do want to point out uh, some of our upcoming shows. We're going to be at a number of state AER conferences. Uh, we've also been at a number of Braille Challenge events. We will be at CSUN. Uh, you can come meet Big E, which is our robot friend, who some of you may know uh, from past conferences, who likes to say that he invented uh, the eBot. We don't tell him any differently, so because he's a he's a very cool robot, and we don't want to hurt his ego. But if you if you are at CSUN, come and meet Big E, uh, the Hems robot. We will also be at CTE BVI, getting in touch with literacy, the consumer shows this summer. Uh, you name it, we are everywhere, as can be attested to by my wife uh, when she says that I'm never here. So uh, thank you all for. Tuning in this afternoon, we've zoomed through this entirely more quickly than we usually do. That, it just means we have that much more time for questions. I would also like to point out that we have had a couple of product uh, launches this year at the ATIA, or Assistive Technology Industry Association Conference. We released our latest digital book reader called the Blaze ET, and we released a 14-cell Braille display called the Smart Beetle, which has a number of really nice and unique capabilities, including being able to be hooked up to six different devices simultaneously. And you've got the ability to use the keyboard, the Braille keyboard, as a full computer keyboard. So from more information on either of those products, feel free to get in touch with us. And uh, I will be quiet now and have Michelle read questions. We have a couple of questions, Dave, that we've been answering while you were speaking. So I will go over those um, in between while we're waiting for new questions to come through. Uh, we do have one user who would like you to explain the differences in each model. OK. The eBot basic unit is a video magnifier only. It does not have optical character recognition capabilities. It has all of the features that you would expect in a good near and distance viewing video magnifier so that you can look at materials that are close up, you can look at materials far away, uh, but you are not going to be able to use optical character recognition, so you're not going to be able to take advantage of multiple modalities of getting your information. The eBot Advanced is the next model up, and it adds optical character recognition to the mix. So the optical character recognition that it adds is whatever is in view of the camera. So it's what you see is what you get, which is WYSIWYG or something like that if you try to say the acronym. So it is going to capture whatever is in view of the camera, whatever material is in view of the camera. The eBot Advanced also comes with a remote that you can use, which gives you another way of interacting with the eBot. Uh, the the eBot Basic Unit, you have uh, buttons that are on the the eBot itself, or you can use whatever screen you're hooked up with, your Mac or your PC or your Android or your iPad. So the eBot Advanced also adds a remote to the mix. Now we jump to the eBot Pro, and there are several differences between the eBot Advanced and, and the eBot Pro. For starters, the, pre the other two models of eBot, the eBot and the eBot Advanced, 
you have to manually control the camera, whereas the eBot Pro has a motorized camera that allows for you to move between near view, distance view, scan a, uh, around a room, look at a page, uh, a, a, a complete line of text, move to the next line and keep reading text without ever actually having to physically touch the camera. You can either use the joystick remote or you can use gestures on your tablet or keyboard commands on your Mac or your PC. The eBot Pro also has a second camera. This allows for optical character recognition of a full page, whether it is physically on the screen or not, so that it's getting the entire page of, of a document. Uh, this allows for not having to worry about, like, saying a newspaper, getting part of the story, adjusting the paper, and then getting the next part of the story. The eBot Pro also has a secure digital card slot, which allows for easy storage of any images that you're seeing on the eBot Pro as JPEGs. You can also save scanned images as JPEGs and text files. The eBot Pro is a little bit heavier than the eBot and eBot Advanced, and that's because of the motorized cameras. So that's a quick explanation of the three different models of eBot. One other thing to point out that we haven't mentioned up to this point is that you can also plug any of these models into just a flat screen monitor. So that if you wanted to plug these into a computer monitor or to your giant plasma screen TV, that's also possible. Okay, and going back um, while you were speaking, Dave, some of the questions that we already had covered in the chat window, just to review those. Uh, someone asked if the wireless connection to the tablet was over Bluetooth, and um, Bluetooth is fundamentally too slow for this type of a video magnification use. So we do have an internal Wi-Fi network that eBot creates on its own, uh, you do not need the internet to use eBot, and when you connect the eBot to your iPad, it's just like you're connecting to an internet network, but instead you connect to the eBot. So it's very simple, and it provides uh, a much better connection than a Bluetooth would. Uh, Dave, if you want to speak quickly, there was a question about whether there is an app on the Microsoft Store for the Windows tablet. For the, P for the Windows tablets, at this point, you are using... Uh, the PC app, which is downloadable from the HIMSS website, we do not have it in the Microsoft App Store yet. Um, it should be there at some point, but at the moment it is only available on our website. So for a Mac or a PC or a Windows tablet, you are going to be downloading an app from our website to connect the eBot to an Android device. You would be downloading an app from the Google Play Store. And to connect to an iDevice, you would be downloading an app from uh, the iTunes Store. If you wanted to plug the eBot directly into an HDMI-capable screen, whether it's a monitor or a TV, we give you an, a, 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 an HDMI cable to do that. We also give you a USB 3 cable in the box so that you can plug uh, the unit via hardwire into your Mac or your PC. And another question that we answered, Dave, was uh, can the audio play through the iPad? And we explained quickly that um, all of the brains, I like to say, are built into the eBot. So all of the OCR, the text-to-speech, the voices, everything is built directly into the eBot unit itself. So that even if you have no monitor, no computer, nothing connected to the eBot at all, the OCR will still work, and the voices do come out of the eBot itself. They do not come out of the iPad. But it does have a headphone connection, so you can use a headphone for privacy or to extend the reach of the audio if you're in a, a group setting. Which means you could also plug it into a killer stereo and hear optical character recognition and surround sound. <laughs> And some other questions. Uh, Rob asked, does the eBot have split screen view specifically on a Mac or PC? As an example, top half being a grade sheet and the bottom being a student's work. Randy, Randy already answered yes. Because you're on okay. a PC, 
see, you can minimize the eBot window just like you do with any other program. And so in True. that way, you can show what's being magnified from eBot in a smaller window and a file on your computer in another. Uh, and then uh, we do have another question. How about recording video on the eBot Pro model? Can you talk about that? This was something that was originally supposed to happen that has not happened yet, and I do not have a timetable for it. And then someone asked um, a related but unrelated question. They wanted to know if you can speak a little bit about the Blaze ET that we just announced at ATIA last month. Sure. The, the Blaze ET is very similar to the Blaze EZ, except that it actually does have a numeric keypad so that when you are trying to enter in things like book titles for downloading books, you're using the old T9 method that uh, we all used to use on our touchtone phones when we were texting. The Blaze ET also offers a number of of things such as being able to move files on the device. It offers the ability to be able to zip files, unzip files. Um, there's some other things that we are working on with the camera uh, that haven't been implemented and that we haven't announced yet. Uh, but its primary difference between the Blaze Easy and the ET is the, the addition of a keypad. So that instead of just having the arrow keys to move around, you're using the keypad uh, much along the lines of uh, what you're used to with the book sense. And back to the eBot, what are the price differences and where can we look for the machines? We'll answer those in reverse order. You can go to our website www.hims-inc.com and you can look at all of our products from there. The price, the pricing for the basic eBot unit is $2,695. The eBot Advanced, which adds the optical character recognition, uh, whatever is in view of the camera, is $2,995. And the eBot Pro, where you're getting the motorized cameras, the SD card slot, and the full page optical character recognition is 3895 And of course, if anyone wants at a demonstration at their school or place of business, if you will call our office in Austin, Texas, it's 888-520-4467. We do have uh, representatives and dealers all across the country. There probably is one somewhat near your neck of the woods, at least, that can come out and show that to you. And Patricia wants to know, can you tell me a little more about the joystick you mentioned earlier? Do all of the models have it? The eBot Pro has the joystick. The eBot Advanced does not, and the eBot doesn't have a remote control at all, which is where the joystick is. The joystick allows you to move the camera around essentially with just one finger so that you can move the can you can switch the camera from near view to distance view you can move the camera uh, to the left or the right you can move the camera down by a line of text so you've got complete control of the camera uh, essentially with one finger so it's 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 really super convenient and Sean wants to know if there are training materials available for teaching the eBot um, and I'm going to go ahead and say uh, there are not currently, but we have excellent people, uh, both here in Austin, Texas, and throughout the country. We have employees that are based throughout the country, as well as dealers throughout the country who are very familiar with this product, and they can definitely help with training. Um, and it also should be said that the eBot doesn't require a whole lot of training to get started because of the familiar controls and the connectivity to tablets and PCs. Most of the controls your users will already sort of know how to use. Uh, Patricia has a couple of questions. Uh, can you speak to how clear the images taken from a distance are, like taking pictures of the board? Boy, this is when you really wish that we had some video of eBot in action. It's easier to see it than to try to describe it. Michelle, you may do a better job of describing the clarity of the, of, of the images. All I can tell you is that people seem to be quite impressed by it. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it is an HD device. We're getting cr uh, crisp, clear images. That being said, if you wanted something to be muddy and out of focus, it wouldn't be that hard to make it muddy and out of focus. Uh, I would encourage you to get in touch with us and have us come out and do an eBot demonstration for you, and let's let's 
find out in your specific circumstances. What I tell people when I've done demos of the eBot is that the clarity of the magnification and also the image capture is going to depend on uh, your proximity to the board. Obviously, the farther away you are, the lower the magnification and the less the quality of the image. So if the eBot, the student doesn't necessarily have to be in the front of the room, but if the eBot is as close to the board as it can get, you're going to get a better picture. So that is um, a sort of a loaded question. It's one of those things that you have to kind of see uh, and envision in your particular environment to see what the outcome will be for you specifically. Um, and another question along the same lines, what is the maximum magnification? And that it depends on what you have it connected to. If you've got it connected to an 80 inch television, it's going to be a lot higher than if it's connected to an iPad. Here's a couple of, here are a couple of ideas on, on how this works. On an iPad, on a standard iPad, you could hit, your magnification could go from a minimum of 0.8x, uh, so it would be 8 tenths larger than a, the original uh, size, up to 35 times the original size. So you're going from 0.8x to 35x. On a 24-inch monitor, at the low end, you're looking at 2.2x, so that the image is starting out a little over twice its original size, and you can take it up to 96 times its original size. On a 17-inch monitor or a 17-inch laptop, at the low end, you're looking at 1.5 times its, its original size, up to 65 times its original size. Uh, so it totally depends on the size of the screen uh, and, and the sort of the, the, the boundaries that eBot has to work within. And we have a question about the pairing. Does eBot lose the connection to the iPad if either device goes into sleep mode, thus requiring you to repair the devices? It shouldn't. Um, now that I've said that, the first thing I'm going to do when this is over is put the iPad to sleep and wake it up and see if it does it. But it, 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 it should catch it. You should not have to worry about the, the eBot itself is not going to go into sleep mode. Uh, if your iPad goes into sleep mode when you wake it up, your, your network should be rejoined. And I think because it's using a Wi-Fi network, it's just like your internet. When your iPad goes to sleep, it doesn't forget about your internet connection to your Wi-Fi in your home or at your school. Whenever it wakes up, it usually will find that connection and connect again all by itself. That's right. That's right. Uh, another question came through. Can you give us suggestions on how to work with the school systems as well as the Division of Blind Services and better promote this product specifically because of budget restraints? The easiest way to promote this product is for people to see it. Uh, and again, this comes back to our, our, our dealer network that we have across the country. If, when you take this into a school system and show it and have the student try the various capabilities that are offered, then it makes sense. The problem with video magnifiers in general, and for that matter, a lot of assistive technology in general, is that you can theoretically explain what this will do, but until people see it in action, they really don't get it. So I would strongly encourage you to get in touch with us, set up uh, uh, an opportunity for us to come out and show the services, the folks from Services for the Blind, uh, the folks in your local school district, what eBot can do. We are also working on and should have ready re in the relatively near future some video clips showing eBot in action. And those should, all, those should also give some idea of exactly what eBot can do. And I think concerning budget as well, I, I think if you really think about the product and everything it can do, it is a product that should save the school money. This is a product that will enable the student to take their own notes um, to a point, depending on their vision and depending on their abilities. Um, but that's a note taker that you don't have to pay to sit in class. Those are copies the teacher doesn't have to make. That's time the teacher doesn't have to spend. Uh, the fact that this does not, um, it's not limited as far as the monitor goes means that you don't need to purchase a special monitor or a special computer to use the eBot. The eBot will connect to whatever monitor the school already has in the classroom. It'll connect to whatever monitor the student already has at home. So you're saving money on the external monitor on that side, 
And then due to the, the portability of the product itself, you don't need to have a video magnifier in the library and another one in the computer lab and another one in the classroom. This one unit can travel with the student. So I think in a lot of ways, this is a product that could save the school a lot of money. Um, I, I think you maybe just need to point out all of those ways that they'll save money by purchasing this one product. I think also it lets, it, it, we've, we've all had the, the situation where, you know, you had to have a para that would get the cart of equipment from one room to the to the next for the student. You don't need that with eBot. You can have your para doing thing, you know, doing other things as far as, you know, making other materials accessible uh, to the student. You can eliminate a lot of staff time uh, with, with this device because it's portable and because it's lightweight. And I know this doesn't directly uh, match what you're asking for, but I always come back to the fact that it's certainly cheaper to go ahead and get this equipment now than to have someone who potentially didn't get a decent education later on and is therefore unemployable. So it's sure, you know, a couple thousand bucks now beats having to support this person for the rest of our lives. And Patricia wants to know, if we got the school system to buy one, is there a warranty? What would be the process if something about it broke? Good question. The warranty, I'm going off the top of my head here, I believe is a two-year warranty. All repairs of HIMSS products are done in Austin, Texas, so that if something were to happen to the eBot, you would send it back to us, we would fix it, send it back to you. Our average turnaround time from the time that we get the device to the time that we send it back to you is 72 hours. So we're, uh, and keep in mind that's average because someone out there will find a case somewhere where we didn't meet that 72 hours, but it's on average, it's a 72 hour turnaround time. So we understand that these divide, you know, we, uh, our, our president is low vision, our tech support staff is blind, uh, a significant portion of our sales force, including me, is blind. We understand the necessity of keeping this equipment in people's hands, so we do everything we can to repair it as fast as humanly possible and to get it back to you. And if you have a chance to get a demonstration of the eBot in person, I think you will see that it is a very hardy device, especially when you think about the weight only being about five pounds. It's a pretty sturdy device. And even when you tap on the desk, the camera really doesn't wiggle very much. The, well, the camera wiggles, but the image doesn't wiggle, which is a, a true testament to the connection there. Um, but if you see it in person, I think you'll see that it's a, pretty, it's a pretty hardy device compared to some of the other ones that are out there on the market right now. Uh, Juan wants to know, with the OCR, can it read in other languages like Spanish? It does have Spanish on board uh, at the moment, yes. Oh, Rob has a, a good question. He said, in terms of airport security, will the eBot need to be removed for the x-ray machine, or how would that work? I remove mine. Uh, I have had... TSA people tell me that I didn't need to remove it, and then the bag goes through, and they invariably ask what that thing is that's inside the bag. So I have given in, and I just remove it without being asked at this point. And if they tell me I don't need to remove it, I say thank you, and I remove it anyway. <laughs> Dave, so that's it. If you want to go ahead and wrap up, and I think we can uh, close this thing out. All right, thank you all very much. We will see you in a few weeks. Uh, we hope to see you at CSUN or at uh, the California Transcribers for the Visually Impaired Conference. Uh, again, we will be at a number of state AER conferences. We are also attending a number of Braille Challenge events. So we hope to see you on the road. And thank you all very much for tuning in this afternoon. And we'll see you next month. Thank you.